What I was surprised with in terms of the media's response to the report is that there's very little reporting on climate resilient development. And that's a phrase that the report quotes hundreds of, of times, and it's really at the core of the report. So what does that mean? It's the nexus between climate adaptation, climate mitigation, and economic development. So it's putting people at the very center and considering what do communities need to do to thrive in the future. And that's very much what TechnoServe is doing. We work with smallholder farmers, with small businesses, and we help them to not only build their own incomes, but also um, adapt, mitigate climate risk for the future, and do that in a very low carbon pathway. I think what I saw as different from the previous report is that this report really highlights how we are currently adapting to climate change and, and what adaptation responses may exist in the future. And so instead of all gloom and doom, I think we're finally getting a bit more tangible, actual and real solutions, as well as maybe even a hint towards a brighter future in a sense. The most important learning that we've had over the past 50 years is that incentives really matter. We work with smallholder farmers and small businesses and help them adopt new practices, change their behaviors to drive economic growth, to drive adaptation, and even in some cases, mitigation and biodiversity gains. To make that happen, there needs to be some kind of immediate incentive for the individual. They want to grow their businesses today, they want to put food on the table today. But if we tie adaptation and mitigation into their current business models, their current business needs, to grow their profitability, to grow their business, all of a sudden it becomes much more attractive to them and they adopt the practices. In our work with Nespresso, we've partnered with about 70,000 farmers in Kenya and Ethiopia, and we've helped them to adopt regenerative farm practices. So soil management, including composting, shade treeing, building agroforestry farms to improve the quality of the coffee and to sell more at higher prices, but also to build the resilience of the farm. As a, a co-benefit, if you like, or as a side benefit, those farms are also very low carbon, but that's not why the farmer adopt all of these practices. She does that because she wants to have a better life for her family and pay school fees. In the regions uh, of higher incomes, it is willful food waste that is further along the supply chain that really dominates. So retailers rejecting food based on bumps or bruises or uh, coloring or other times they simply order or serve too much. And people like you and me, we overestimate how many meals we will cook in a week, tossing out milk that has gone bad or forget about leftover lasagna in the back of the fridge, for example. Adopting a plant-rich diet, eating more meat from organic farms where animals are fed natural diets. I think those are all very important ways for all of us to support the climate. I think it's important to promote the investment in adaptation. And that's really what this report is calling for. So to contact your local politician, put pressure on your politicians and, and how we at a macro scale invest in adaptation, but also get involved yourself. This is why I work for TechnoServe and get, get involved with organizations like TechnoServe, be it in your spare time as, or, or in your career. We still have an important window and a momentum uh, to help vulnerable people adapt to climate change now and also from our end really dig deeper into the mitigation and change the way we, we lead our lives.